Hey birds, how are you all doing? Happy New Year. So today we have a special program for you all. Uh, our friend Mr. JavaScript is here with us to present his latest creation. And that is a real cool animation that he has done using uh, the phaser library uh, in JavaScript. So uh, what is the phaser library you might ask? Well, there are a lot of uh, game engine libraries available uh, in JavaScript. And these libraries enable you to do a lot of cool things like 2D graphics, 3D graphics. Some of them are free, some are paid. Um, some of them let you do GUIs, etc., etc. But uh, uh, but phaser.js uh, is a very popular library in the programming community, and our friend has chosen to use that library to do his latest creation. So first of all, let me welcome Mr. JavaScript. Welcome, Mr. JavaScript. Hello. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, we have your code right before us. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, let me, uh, if you will permit me, let me just introduce uh, uh, the setup um, a little bit here. So what is happening here is that uh, um, uh, Mr. JavaScript, he has got a server running on this local machine. And uh, so what we will do is uh, he will basically open the browser and connect to that uh, local machine IP address plus port number. Uh, and uh, as soon as he connects to it, the server that is listening on that port, he will, uh, that server starts running the demo. So uh, you see this beautiful demo before you. So uh, there, is a, uh, there is a character uh, who's hopping around. He can walk left, he can walk right, he can jump left limb, jump right. And uh, oh, is that gravity being simulated here? Yeah. Oh, that is pretty cool. So for gravity, uh, how are you doing it? Is there some physics engine behind it? Yeah, some physics engine. Oh, nice, nice, like nice. So yes, we will uh, definitely like to learn more about it. So uh, so yes, I mean, this is, uh, this is really uh, uh, pretty graphics here. And um, uh, it, it will definitely form uh, a very good solid base for building a real nice game uh, based on this uh, graphics. So all right, uh, so now without uh, further ado, let's get head straight over to the code. And uh, Mr. JavaScript, uh, may I ask you right off the bat, um, so we, I, right at the top of this code, I see uh, an object being created. I see var well, game is new phaser.game. Can you just explain what is going on there? Um, and uh, please take away. So <coughs> we are basically declaring a new phaser game mm -hmm. and for the arguments we are passing the width the height of the screen yeah all right of the canvas actually. of the canvas yes. and phaser.auto basically chooses from web geo render or a canvas i see so okay we are choosing the auto option here and then there's an empty argument followed yeah. by a is that a dictionary? Yes, followed by a dictionary. Yeah. So what are the three uh, key value pairs that I see in the dictionary? So these are basically functions, the preview functions that we will be using, the preloader, the creator, and the updater. So it seems like the preloader by the name, uh, I mean, I'm just drawing uh, uh, concepts from other languages that I've worked on in the past. Uh, the preloader probably, will it load, will it preload all the assets like the image files and the sound files, etc. Exactly. Cool, cool. And the creator, the create function will most likely be allocating memory for different objects, sprites, yeah, etc. Basically setting. And what characters. is the update here? Is that oh, is that something that gets, that's the game loop? Oh, okay. But do you have to code? Oh, I see. Interesting, interesting. So unlike, for example, the Pygame library that I've worked with in the in the in the Python world where I actually implemented the game loop myself. There was actually a loop that I coded up with a while. Yeah. And, and, but uh, like that, the loop is not something that you code up directly. Uh, it is you, running in the system somewhere, and, it, and that loop calls you, calls the update function. Yeah. So does it call like every tick, pretty much, every iteration yeah. of the loop? Yeah. I see, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, can you, that is good. So at the top, let's go back <coughs> to the top. So that's, so uh, to my viewers, to our viewers, basically, as Mr. Jowsty explained, the first thing that you're doing is you're creating an object called a uh, game. The small game is a handle, and it's the it's an object being allocated uh, of the phaser.game class. So now that we have the game object here um, allocated, uh, I see you're creating some more variables after that. You're creating, yeah. can you walk us through that? So this is a player, 
Yes. Then, Which is the character. Yeah. Um, this is going to be some arrow keys that we will assign later. I see. This is basically short for background. Yes. That's the ground sprite. Yes. And that's jump button. I see. Okay. But we okay. actually don't need this anymore. I see. I see. I see. So you're going to get to it. Okay, cool. That's... All right, so so now I think we are at a point where we can start diving right away into those three functions. Yeah. Let's uh, let's please can you go and uh, explain how the preload, what the preload function is doing. So we are gonna basically do game dot loads dot sprite sheet, and that means we're basically gonna uh, load a sprite sheet. A sprite sheet meaning uh, a collection uh, of yeah uh, sprite images. Yeah. Okay, so you're loading all I'll that. I'll actually show you the. Oh, that is cool. There you go. Wonderful. That's the sprite sheet, guys. So you can see before you there are eight sprite images that are laid out together on the same file. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, let's head back to the code window again. So you're loading this sprite sheet. Um, this is going to be the ID of okay. the image. Got that's it. the image path. Yes. And so 96 by 96, that's the... Uh, width and height of each frame. Okay. Of each uh, character. Okay. And eight is just telling it that there are eight frames of animation. Got it. Got it. So there are eight of them, and then each each of the images, each of the sprite images, is ninety six by ninety six pixels. Yeah. All right, that is good. And the ID is player sheet. So yeah. later on in the code, uh, you would refer to it as player sheet. Okay, what the next is the ground. Okay, so that is fairly straightforward. We're just yeah. loading a simple image this time. Okay, so the ground ping, can you show us the ground ping file, please? Sure. All right, uh, so that's the ground ping. Now, how did, how did it look in the, oh, was that the background? No, that was not the background. I will actually explain how this got stretched. I see, I see, okay. It's actually fairly simple. Okay, oh, this is the ground level on which the character or the player is walking yeah. around. I see, I see, okay. So where is uh, where is the background being loaded up? So even uh be even create. Oh, uh, we're actually not loading a background. Oh, we're okay. just setting a color. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so there's no images being loaded for the background. Uh, you're just declaring a background color. That is why you don't see anything else in the preload. All right, so that is good. So we've talked to, talked about the assets being loaded in the preload function. Cool. Let's move on to the create function now. Which is the uh, which is the next one that uh, Mr. JavaScript will talk about, and there is a lot of meat here I can see already. Please take away, please take. So first, we're actually gonna start the phase uh, phaser physics system. Yes. And there's also a P2JS physics system, but that's not gonna be covered. Okay. Um, this is called physics.rk. Mm -hmm. And so now, in the next line, we're gonna uh, set a uh, 400 for the y value of gravity so what is this for? i mean if you put in a smaller number what is that that is simulating like small less gravity yeah okay okay good good so so you're choosing a certain number 400 to, to represent the gravitational force yeah or how many okay all right and then of course viewers can basically experiment with different values to yeah. see different right. okay good let's move on the background color you already talked yeah. about that's the RGB values, 0, 1, 40, 200. All right. So now we're assigning a sprite that will be located at the middle of the screen and at the middle bottom, almost middle bottom. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to give it the ground ID mm -hmm. to make sure it's using that. Oh, is that, is that what the ground... So we had loaded ground.ping into that we had loaded that image yeah. and we had called it uh, by a variable called ground yeah. so that image is being sort of added at this location in the screen and so we're going to assign that sprite to ground all right cool and in the next line we're going to set an anchor mm -hmm. for ground and okay. that is basically like a point in the image mm -hmm. and right now we're putting it uh, right there okay and so Basically, the what the position of the image that we will place it at yes is gonna be uh, based on that point. I see, I see. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so let's uh, continue. 
and uh, yeah so so what 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 is going on with the last one the scale dot x that is where we're stretching the x i see i see so and the, we're gonna multiply what it already is by 12.5 and you can figure out who, how much you need to multiply it by getting the canvas um the width of the canvas and dividing it by the width of your image i see i see so the ground image that you all saw just now uh, the ground image was this image here. This is an image with a certain width. And what Mr. JavaScript is doing is he's taking the total width of the canvas and dividing the total width by the width of this image to get a number 12 something, 12.5. Uh, 12 and he's multiplying that by uh, to this width. So it, And then he's basically stretching this image by that number. So he's stretching it about 12 and a half times. So now it basically the square becomes more for, uh, it becomes a rectangle. And that rectangle represents your ground on which the player will walk and run around. Okay, that is pretty cool. So, what is the next cool thing? Oh, player.animation. So, oh, no, we are here, player sheet. Okay, so. So, yeah. and we're gonna assign the player sheet to player. Yes. And this is uh, basically where we're putting the sheet. Got it. And whenever you add the sheet sprite, mm -hmm. Um, since it already knows it's a sprite sheet, yeah, and we already assigned it what frame, mm -hmm. what the values of how so, big each frame is, uh, it will automatically just display the first frame. Oh, I see. So we're not displaying the the entire sprite sheet. Yeah. It is only displaying the first image of the sprite sheet. Yeah, and default. it automatically does that. Good, good, good. All right. So that is what I was wondering already. Like, if you are all you're doing is if you're saying Game dot add dot sprite and player sheet would it have displayed the entire sheet? Meaning it would have displayed all the eight and images. That's why no, we actually so it declare not. it's a sprite sheet. Before. Got it. So it knows it's a sprite sheet, and by default it will only add the first sprite in that sprite sheet. Okay, and so, so we we're have setting player. the scale to one. Yes. Which is, you don't actually need that. So you don't change the size here, basically. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then you set the anchor to the middle of the frame. Got it. Point 0.5 and 0 0.5. 0 0.5 will take you to the middle along the x-axis and the next 0 0.5 will take you down to the middle of the y-axis. So you're right, sp right smack in the middle of the image. And so you should do this because whenever you want to flip the image to go left, it's going to flip using that point oh. so that it doesn't move the image. Okay guys, so this is a very interesting thing I wanted to highlight here. Uh, now coming from say the Pi game world from Python, um, uh, I actually had to uh, create uh, different images for our characters, uh, and some images would be facing, would be ha would have the character facing and walking toward the right, and then some other images would have the character walk facing and walking to the left. Uh, you don't really have to do that here, as Mr. Jaska pointed out. Uh, you can easily create the anchor point, and then you can flip the anchor point. All you need is one image facing either of the two directions. Let's say you load in an asset facing with the character facing towards the right. All you do is just flip it inside the code using the anchor point, and uh, that should do it. That is good. So it it, it it involves less work from creators of the images. All right. Yeah. So uh, after that, we are actually gonna add animations now. Okay. And to do this, we're gonna do player dot animations dot add. Mm -hmm. And this right here, idle, just means the name of the animation. And zero is the frames that you're going to use. So like zero is going to be the first frame because... When you say first frame, you mean the first image. Yeah, so it always comes from zero. I zero, see. one, two, three. Got it, got it. So zero is the straightforward image sort of looking right front. And so that's look, basically just the standing image. Yeah, so that's the idle. He's standing idle, basically. And we're and the, just going to put one image for that because there's only one yeah, image right. standing. But what about walking? For walk, you have 2, 3. Yeah, so that is so this two one and three. This I see. Okay, yeah, that kind of looks like walking. Yeah. And what about 1? One? 1 is is a jump? That's going to be the jump. All right, that looks pretty easy. Well, the first image is obviously the character jumping up. And we're not going to use this one today. Oh, you won't yes. use uh, image number 4, 5, 6, and 7? Yeah. All right, cool. Not today. So we're only using the first four images. So and this time we're just yeah. going to put 2 and 3. And for jump, we're just going to put 1. Cool, wonderful. All now, right. Now we're assigning some... 
arrow keys to cursors. All right. And we're going to enable the physics for player and ground. I and see. And we're going to use the phaser.physics.arcade physics. I see. Oh, so you have to, to enable it, you have to explicitly call out the sprites. Yeah. Uh, for these two sprites, the player and the ground, uh, physics uh, engine is enabled. And uh, and then, okay. Now, since the ground isn't supposed to fall, yes. Um, we're just going to make that not movable. Mm-hmm. To that two. Yes. And we're gonna set allow gravity to fall so that it doesn't fall. All right, wonderful. So so this was all the cool stuff that you did in the create function. Yeah. And uh, um, so all right, and uh, let's move on to the next one. And I guess this is where all the action happens. Yeah. The update function is the one that gets called every iteration of the game loop, and uh, uh, again drawing from my experience from other gaming libraries. In this function, I expect uh, all the sprites to uh, to be moved to the next position in the next frame. All right, please take away. So for the first line, I'm just gonna call a function called player input. Yes. And this is it, a pre-built function. I created it right here. Okay. And basically, what we're so just like so, player input is uh, the main idea is to collect input from the game uh, gamer. And uh, you'll be collecting information about what keys were pressed, yeah. and that will come into uh, into uh, uh, that will basically that information will be captured. So that's the player input. And what happens? Uh, please continue on the uh, update. Well, let me so, no, no, we'll, we'll, yeah, I mean that will be good. We'll you can uh, you'll definitely go into more details there. But just as an overall, so you got player information, the player input, and then what happens next here? So. Um, we're checking if uh, player and ground are colliding. And okay. If that is not true, player the animations that play. Uh, so basically, it's just gonna do the jump animation. Okay. So if and they are not colliding, as long as they are not colliding, uh, you will you will do the jump animation. Yeah. All right, and then what happens here? Let me show yeah, the yeah, arguments. Yes. So this is the ID of the animation. Yes. And seven, that means seven frames per second. Okay. And true means it's just going to keep looping if this happens. I see. So this thing is not. Okay, all right. And then what about the last one? That's just going to make it so player and ground are going to collide so that they don't like overlap. Okay, okay. So, uh, okay, and then um, so what? Okay, let's 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 go over this. It seems like there's a lot of uh, stuff happening in the player input. Also, let's understand. Is this where some x values and y values maybe are getting updated? Yeah. All right. Can you please explain? So this is where all the action is, which is why I think uh, maybe if you go back again. So I think what is happening is that. Uh, Mr. JavaScript is calling a player input here as the first thing in the update and this player input is doing a lot of cool stuff. It is collecting, it appears to be collecting information about the keystrokes and based on the keystrokes all the sprite uh, movement is being triggered uh, and uh, the new x, y values are being computed and after all that is done we come back to the update and then there's collision detection, collision checking going on. So first of all, let's continue with the player input and try to understand from Mr. JavaScript how what happens when what key is pressed and how the XY values may be getting updated for the player and for the ground or whatever. Please continue. Okay, so first we're gonna check if uh, the right button is down. Okay. And for that, we're gonna make the scale one, which is basically the original scale. Yes. And so we're gonna play the walk animation mm -hmm. at seven frames per second. So how long do you play that? How do you how long do you play that? Oh, that's uh, gonna keep playing as long as this is this on. I see. So as long as the player keeps the right arrow key pressed, yeah. uh, the the animations object player or animation will keep playing the walk image. Uh, the walking image will keep getting played, and uh, and uh, okay, cool, all right. Now we're gonna add uh, four pixels to the player the x. I see. I or see. the x position. Okay. And in the same right is down, we're actually going to check if the player or the gamer presses the up button, if they want to jump, 
and we're doing it inside of the right if because what if they want to jump while yes yes that that, that is what forward. creates like a parabol parabolic yeah. type movement where you have the right arrow and the up arrow pressed together yeah. all right so, so um we're doing the same thing except we're gonna uh check if uh there's a collision between the collision player. between player and ground yes. also so that makes it so you can only jump when the player is on the ground i see does it which prevents double jumping got it so if the player is already jumped and he's already uh some y values away from the ground and if there's a right arrow and an up arrow button pressed that will not trigger another jump it will just yeah. continue finishing that jump yeah. okay so that is good so so now we're gonna change uh, set the velocity of y to negative 450 negative because negative will make it go up yeah. and positive will make it go down yeah okay all right and if this if isn't met yes it's just gonna play the walk because the right button is down so okay okay got it so in the first part when the right button was down uh, you want you asked it to play the walk and it's in every every frame will increment the x position by four right and if the right arrow if the up arrow is not pressed uh, he will simply continue playing the walk yeah okay so so you actually not you might not actually need this yes that's what i was thinking maybe if we don't need this line here yeah. we could try it out actually okay we'll just because, yeah, it out. yeah let's comment it out for now so yeah i mean this is pretty good code um, and it takes care of uh, one scenario where the player only has the right button pressed and it takes care of the next scenario where the player has the right button and the up arrow button pressed uh, to trigger the jump. All right, let's continue, please. So now we do that. This uh, else if yes, we're basically checking if the left arrow is down, and then the only thing different we're doing yes. now is setting the scale to negative one, which means it's gonna flip the image. Yes. And we're gonna decrease the x. Yes, and again, maybe you can comment this out here because you yeah. probably won't need this. All right, so this is pretty much a mirror image of the above code that we saw. And this block of code, uh, uh, the else if part, like can you highlight this line, line number is 97 to 108. In this block, uh, he's taking care of two scenarios. One scenario is where uh, the player has uh, pressed the left arrow button, in which case uh, the, the in which case our character will move, he'll walk left. And the other scenario is where he has got the left arrow button and the up arrow button pressed. In which case uh, the player will jump, and he will jump, uh, and it will trigger a parabolic motion to the left. It will be a jumping to the left sort of scenario. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, so for the last one, we're just checking if the cursor, um, if the gamer presses up. Yes. And we're doing this again because what if the person doesn't want to move while jumping? Oh yeah. So this last scenario again, if you highlight this last elsef. Uh, this is taking care, you mean like just this part, 111 to 113 or 114? Yeah. 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 So this part, uh, he's only checking, he's taking care of the scenario where uh, the gamer has pressed only the up arrow. There is no left arrow pressed, there is no right arrow pressed. So the character is not walking to the left, not walking to the right. The character is only being asked to jump straight up. So that is why, uh, that is what is happening here. And uh, cool, that is good. And what is the last else? And so that else, the last else basically means if all of these ifs aren't met, you're just going to play the idle. So none, none, of the, none of the keys is pressed. Yeah. If none of the keys is pressed, the player just uh, stands idle. Yeah, idle is going to be the first image in the yeah. part. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so this was all that was, this is, so a lot of stuff is happening in the player input. Uh, just a quick recap, you are collecting all the keystroke information uh, from the gamer and depending on which keys or sets of keys have been pressed, you are making the player animate uh, walk left or walk right or walk or jump up or uh, jump in a para parabolic portion to the left side or to the right side. So all the movements are being uh, animated here and once this player input function gets done, uh, we go back to the, uh, to the update method. And this is, and then after that, you are checking for collisions. Yeah. 
if if the player can you please re review this again so th what is this collision yeah can you review so this so it's going to check if the player is colliding with the ground yes and it's going to actually check if it's not colliding yes yeah, so if it does not collide it's just going to play the jump animation so it'll com continue making the player jump up and up and up and yeah. then eventually go to the top and yeah. then start coming down so what would have happened if we had not added this code uh, so in that case uh, the player uh, animation would not have uh, continued well that is again something that we'll try out later no, what will actually happen is since uh, the up is only checked once it's yeah. gonna play the animation but it's only gonna like be a glitchy frame that happens for like one millisecond and then it's gonna go back to some right or else i see i see i see Hopefully you understand. yes 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 so that is clear so 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 uh so the thing is that once you press the up arrow button and you release it so as soon as you press the up arrow button uh, uh that information is captured and a jump is initiated yeah. But you can, if you let go of the arrow, the up arrow, the jump that has been initiated, that will still continue because the player has jumped up a little bit and he is no longer colliding with the ground. So since he's no longer colliding with the ground, this function, uh, this code gets triggered. It is no longer colliding with the ground and you still keep animating it. Uh, so the player still keeps jumping and complete the jump. Yeah. And finally it comes back, uh, falls back to the ground. All right, and then um, we're just this will just make it so that player and ground they don't overlap each other, so that the player doesn't keep falling when he hits the ground. Okay, all right, cool. All right, wonderful. So, uh, so this is a uh, really good code. Uh, can we? Let's demo uh, it once more. Sounds good. Sounds good. Take it away. That's pretty much it. Very nice, very nice, very cool. He's walking right, walking left, jumping straight up, uh, jumping uh, up and to the right, jumping left, and uh, and walking to the left. All right, so so that is a really one cool animation. So what do you intend to? What are, so before we close up, first of all, thank you, Mr. Jawaskar, for showing us the code structure, how it works, uh, and uh, we are all enthused by the Phaser library. And I'm sure you, you'll have more cool things, more animation and games using Phaser. Yeah. So uh, would you like to say anything to the viewers before we sign off? Thanks for watching. Thank you. Till next time. Bye.